Item number three is a fresh tool mark that's caused by an implement. This area here and here would be look for fingerprints. You can also see what looks like um, a fresh jemmy mark there. You'd also be looking for um, paint and things like that that's fallen down, which would indicate that it is fresh. We'll be taking a Micracil or a Repracil mould of that back to the ballistics section where if we do have an implement used at the scene that we can make a comparison with the tool marks. With the screwdriver, uh, what we're looking for is trace, uh, which is cellular material from the person who's held it, so from the handle, so we're hoping that we can get the offender's DNA on the handle and you would think the complainant's blood on the screwdriver, which uh, makes it consistent with um, the injuries that we've got. From that screwdriver, we were able to uh, collect a swab of blood from the end of the blade. Um, and we also collected a trace DNA uh, swab as well from the handle in the hope that we might be able to identify uh, any person that's held that implement recently. This area in here will take uh, probably a day or two to process. Um, with, we'll have to be fairly thorough and with the whole area and also um, trying to follow where the offender has, has gone. The dog squad's only tracked them so far, so um, that's basically what we'll be looking at in here. It appears to be confined to these two rooms, so that's what we'll concentrate on. Item four is uh, a fingerprint that has been located on the window. We would be taking a swab of that for the purposes of DNA test to try and locate the offender's DNA within that print. Can you tell us what techniques you're using today that you didn't use five years ago? Well, the DNA uh, technique that we would use, this is obviously a non-porous surface that we're taking the DNA from the window, but if we were to have a porous surface, we have a DNA tape lift. There's been a number of changes in forensics. Obviously, the introduction of DNA is, is world known. Um, there's also been significant changes in technology, which can then be applied to forensics. Um, a key one of those was a change to digital imaging, away from silver halide type recording of images. Um, great changes in mobile computing technology and also uh, wireless networking uh, have been significant changes. All of those have found their way into the workplace and have significant benefits to, to forensic activities. Because it's an entry point, it's generally an area where you get your most crucial evidence. So um, people have had to break to get in. So when there's a forced entry, they're most often leaving something behind. In relation to DNA, uh, high priority crime scene samples were only able to be analysed and reported back to police within around about 16 weeks and volume crime scene samples were probably reported around 12 months or greater. Since the introduction of this improvement strategy, both major crime scene and volume crime scene samples are now being analysed and reported back to police within three to five weeks. Uh, this valuable information is assisting investigators early in the investigation pro process by supplying them with names of possible offenders. There's various techniques we can use in obtaining uh, fingerprints from scenes. The most common fingerprint technology we use or technique would be the fingerprint powders. Powders come in various colours. Uh, the most common colours are black and white. Uh, the reason I've chosen the black powder here is because of the white uh, background, so we need it for contrast for photography. Well, the fingerprint we found here, for example, um, on the cupboard door, what I've done is placed a barcode next to it so that we can use it for scaling, for searching, and I'll obtain a digital photograph of that remove the SD card from the camera and place it into the tough book and that will be relayed straight back to the fingerprint bureau for searching on the AFIS system. One of the key areas that we've seen improvements is uh, identification of latent fingerprints. Um, by using digital technology and, and wireless networking, we're able to send those back and search them against national databases. So for instance, if we do find a fingerprint at a crime scene, we develop that, that fingerprint using fingerprint methods. Uh, we're able to photograph it digitally and transmit it instantly back to the Fingerprint Bureau so it can be searched against national databases. We've had instances where we're able to identify offenders even before they've returned home from the actual commission of the offence. 
Rochelle, there's um, blood on this wall and arterial spray on the, on the wall and ceiling. Um, and also there's some bloodied shoe impressions and blood along here. But what I'd like is if you and Paul could have a look inside and make an assessment on how you're going to do your examination and do the interactive in conjunction with each other. Um, I, I don't want one to be done without the other. I know it's difficult, but if we can get them both done together. This is the main area of the crime scene where there's been an obvious bloodletting event take place. Uh, we can see here that there's a number of different types of blood stains, and from each of these different types of blood stains, we can ascertain different things about what actually took place, and sometimes bits and pieces about the actual offender. There's a number of shoe sole impressions on the floor uh, which appear to be in blood. We've tested them with a uh, presumptive screening test called tetramethylbenzidine and it does come up positive as do all of the stains in this area. So we can be reasonably confident that all the stains in this area are blood, however we don't know how many victims or how many people have uh, led to uh, the blood being shed. So what we do is we take samples of blood from each of these locations just to confirm the identity of each of those people who shed that blood. This has either come from off the screwdriver or the offender um, may have hurt themselves in the altercation. So I would have to have a look and see how much is on there. With that amount, I think it's unlikely that it's all dripped off the screwdriver. On the floor, there's the shoe sole impressions, which we would match to any person's shoe uh, down the track, should we have uh, an offender's shoe or even the complainant's shoe to eliminate that person as having caused the impression. We've enhanced it with a chemical called leucocrystal violet, which enhances the fine detail. That was then further photographed for further analysis back at the lab.